Our scripture reading is taken from Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. Let's read together. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, You also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vi vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I'm not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Lord has already blessed us upon the reading of His Word. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, mga kapatid ko kay Kristo, dito sa ating iglesia, sa Aika. Let us continue to praise God for His unending grace poured upon us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we are all given with everything that we need for life and godliness. We will continue with our sermon series we entitled The Parables of Jesus. As I mentioned before, atin pong ginugroup no, ang mga talinghaga ni Jesus base po sa topic. And last Sunday, we, we ended about the topic about the nature of the kingdom of God with the parable of the net, focusing on the reality of hell. Today, Atin pong umpisahan ang next focal point in the teaching of the parables of Jesus Christ, which is about service and obedience in the kingdom of God. And we started off with the parable of the vineyard workers that is found in Matthew 20 verses 1 to 16 na atin pong nabasa earlier. Ang grapes po o ubas sa Tagalog were one of the most important crops in the land of Israel, even up to this point in time. But in those days, to own a vineyard, can be considered a very remarkable blessing sa isang tao. And so with this parable, it led us into one of the most important metaphors to describe God's kingdom na ginamit ni Jesus sa kanyang parabola or talinghaga. <clears throat> sa metaphor na ginamit ni Jesus sa kanyang parable na ito, we are led to the idea that there is so much work in the kingdom of God. At paano nga ba natin tinitingnan ang ating service ang ating paninilbihan in the context of God's kingdom. And what blessings await those who are responding no, in obedience. So Jesus started in saying, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. Now his typical introductory formula, the kingdom of heaven is like, you know, is a clue that though Jesus' kingdom is heavenly, but it can really be understood using common activities in this world, in the world. And in this context, the work in the vineyard. The season of harvest has come and the owner, of course, would hire some seasonal workers to help with his harvest. Now, in those times, ang may-ari po ay pupunta lang po sa marketplace kung saan doon nagtipon-tipon ang mga laborers, yung mga walang trabaho, waiting for the landowners or other people to hire them. L literally, they are selling themselves for some manual labor. Usually, there is an agreed-upon amount of money before the deal is closed, no? uh, depending upon the nature of the work, of course. Uh, 
Ang isang denarius ay standard na sahod sa isang manggagawa sa loob ng isang araw. No? Ngunit kakaiba ang kanilang system of work day nung panahong yaon dahil kanila itong dinivide into a three hour increments depending on the scope of work. No? Running from about 6 o'clock in the morning up to 6 p.m. So that we can observe in this parable that here seems to be so much there seems to be so much work in that particular vineyard dahil yung owner una pumunta ng 6 a.m. tapos bumalik ng alas 9 ng in the morning at nagdagdag siya ng mga laborers no about 9 in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing he told them you also go and work in my vineyard and i will pay you whatever is right and he keeps on doing that on the 12 noon 3 p.m. and even 5 p.m. no na hindi na dapat kasali yun sa work or sa hiring, work of hiring, kasi 6 p.m. tapos na dapat ang work, and you are hiring 5 o'clock. No? But what is significant also in this parable is that kahit 5 p.m. na po yun, meron pa rin nakita ang owner na nakatambay lang. Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one hired us. They answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. You can hear and visualize the desperation of these fathers, of these men, whose only hope of feeding his family is by being hired. No? Kaya hindi pa sila nakauwi. No? Hindi pa sila umuwi. Alas 5 na. No? Kasi ano pa naman, ano ang ipapakain nila sa kanilang mga pamilya kung wala nga rin naman silang trabaho o maidalang sweldo pabalik. But praise God, kahit isang oras na lang ang natira, go! When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Okay, tawagin mo lahat. Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. But there is a very surprising turn of event, a shocking development unfolded for these last hour workers no, that were hired. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. Wow! Hindi pala nasayang ang kanila paghihintay. No? Ang kanilang bakanting oras ng paghihintay, it was worth their wait. Sabi pa nga. No? Kung umalis sila dahil 5 o'clock in the afternoon na, imposibleng may mag-hire sa kanila. No? Wala na sana silang tatanggapin na one full day wage. No? So, minsan sa buhay talagang hintay lang may mangyayari din. However, this did not sit well with those who were hired on the first hour ng 6 o'clock in the morning. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowners. Wala naman sanang problema sa arrangement kung hindi lang sana nagreklamo no? itong mga naunang na hire. And I also thought um, it would have been a different turn of event events if those who were hired first received their wage first. Dapat sana yun na yung sinwelduhan nung una, di na sana linakita ang sinahod ng mga nahuling trabahante. But this is exactly the point of the parable, and this should bring us to our problem that people would usually measure their worth based on what they do. Although the plot of this parable represents economic reality, but actually it teaches us about a deeper spiritual truth, that what gives meaning or worth in one's life does not necessarily come from our own efforts. We cannot manufacture or produce our own worth. It is given by the one who created us. Let us see the validity of the points of these grumblers now. Do they have the right to grumble? The owner carefully and respectfully answered them. Sabi niya, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Di ba usapan yun? Take your pay and go, because I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Now, this parable exposes to us the truth that God, the owner of the universe, the kingdom of God, represented by the owner of the vineyard, has the soul, sovereignty, and graciousness, and generosity. And he has the right to extend the same amount of daily wage even to those who are latecomers. Now what is clear is that he did not violate the contract doon sa unang na-hire. Ang usapan nila isang denarius. 
Nung umuwi sila, daladala nila yun. However, this also creates and exposes some troubles, particularly the grumblers in this parable. Because in the human and sinful nature, we tend to lack the ability to grasp and understand this amazing grace that is poured so generously by God. Some people cannot handle the generosity of God. In fact, Jesus confronts that issue in saying here, sabi niya, or are you envious because I am generous? Jesus' statement here exposes that opposing characters of God versus the character of man. His generosity disturbs the sinful spirit of man, which exposes its darkness, causing him to react differently. Diba meron pong mga ganon? That sometimes in their most unguarded moments, people, you know, when they see the success of other people, they are unhappy. That is jealousy, right? When we feel this way, let's watch out. In the kingdom of God, that attitude has to be challenged, has to be realigned, has to be changed. What is that to me when God blesses this person? Ano naman ang pakialam ko kung blines siya ng Panginoon? God is sovereign to do that because I also have my own share of blessings anyway. Jesus is correcting wrong atti attitudes here. Our being self-absorbed. Our being too focused on our work rather than God's work in our life and in the lives of others. And when that happens, we fall into the trap of developing a sense of entitlement. Kami yung naunay, malaki dapat ang amin natanggap. Bakit ganun? May ganun tayong thoughts or analysis because we are operating in the human and material realm. But this will have conflict, of course, in our calling to operate in the spiritual realm. Dahil sa kaharian ng Diyos, our worth, which is based on the grace of God, cannot be calculated like you can calculate a day's wages. We receive it as a gift from God, not as something that we work or hard to earn. You know, at one point, naging ganun din ang pagtingin ng mga disipulo ni Jesus, particularly si Peter. In Matthew, he said, You know, Jesus, we left everything to follow you. What then will be there for us? Nangwenta agad si Peter, anong mapapala niya sa kanyang pagsunod kay Kristo? This hidden motive is exposed in his request for reward. Very obvious, right? At kaya niyo ba itong masikmura ang request ni James and John, the other disciples of Jesus Christ? No? In the account of Mark, they said to Jesus, sabi nila, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for, for you? He asked. Then they replied, Let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You know, when I read this verse again and again, I feel it. I felt it was so outrageous. It was so shocking. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, you know, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup I drink, or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? Because people usually interpret their worth with position, with wealth, with privileges, and many more. Although Peter and the rest of the twelve disciples were the first to give up all they had. To follow Jesus, and yes, hindi magkukulang o nagkukulang ang Dios sa pagreward sa kanila. But to even tell God, this is what I should receive because this is what I did for you, Lord, is a very short-sighted calculation of your reward. And this should bring us to our principle that our worth is in the grace of God alone. You know, in the eyes of the owner, wala nang ang regular job itong mga taong ito, late comer pa. So, para makatanggap ka ng pang isang araw na sahod is blessing enough. And this created an overflowing feeling of joy and gratitude. Kung ikaw ito kapatid, if you were this man na isang oras na lang pero pinapaso ka pa at sinasahuran ka pa ng isang pang buong araw na sahod, di ba lulundag ka sa tuwa? Luluhod ka sa papasalamat? May ganitong klaseng boss pala na napakalaki ang puso at awa para sa kanyang mga worker. 
Nung nakauwi na siya, I can already imagine the excitement of this man in breaking this news to his wife and to his children. Hindi lang dahil may pagkain na sila sa buong araw, kundi yung paraan kung paano siya nagkapera. Kaya blessing this one man is blessing the whole family in the end. The owner definitely is not giving this wage based on this one hour work of this man, but he is seeing the person, he is seeing the worth of this person in the eyes of God. This person is not just worth than one hour wage. At doon sa naunang na-hire, should it not also cause him to be amazed? Dahil hindi all the time ikaw yung nauuna. What if ikaw yung nahuli? Just like the late comers. All of them actually just waited to be hired. Walang pagkakaiba sa kanila. In the eyes of the owner, they are all in need of job badly. In the eyes of God, pare-pareho tayong lahat that need the saving grace of God. Now, on the part of the employer, it was clear that he is in no way has cheated them out of what he had promised. He just chose to be generous and those are two different things. Yes, he could surely operate in the common and standard procedure and still be considered just and right. In fact, yung kanyang sinabi na, I will pay you whatever is right. You know, it's an open statement. Parang open check yun eh. Parang blank check. Because whatever is right can now become subjective without clear basis depending kung anong nais niyang ibigay at, ang, at that particular moment. At sa ating mga Pinoy, you know, we'd love to hear this phrase. Dahil alam natin may pasobra yan pag sinabi mong whatever is right or bahala na po kayo. Kung sumakay ka ng tricycle tapos medyo malayo-layo ang biyahe mo, tatanungin mo ngayon ang driver, magkano po ba inabot ko? Tapos sasabihin, kayo na lang po ang bahala, whatever is right. Most often, pinapasubrahan po natin talaga. May hinihingi kang favor sa isang tao to do some manual work, tapos tatanungin mo, magkano po? Kayo na lang po ang bahala. Sometimes this can be very tricky, no? Dahil mag-isip ka ngayon kung... Kung ito lang ibabayad ko, baka sasabihin niyang kuripot naman itong taong to. Now you'll be forced to give more than what is expected. The moment you release these words, it seems that you are putting yourself in the spotlight. But the owner allowed himself to be on that spotlight and did not fail to amaze his audience dahil in the end, what he gave reflected his true and amazing generosity. He gave more than what is expected. But sadly, this amazing attribute of the owner created a negative response to the other workers. His generosity was considered unfair. Kailan ba naging masama ang pagiging generous? I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? We had an agreement and I stuck with it. Kaya minsan mabuti din yung Sa ating panalangin o sa paghingi, huwag nating diktahan ng Diyos. Ito Lord, ito dapat, ito yung gusto ko, ito yung deserve ko. And mostly because the source of our disappointment in life are the unmet expectations. Kung nakafocus tayo masyado doon sa wage na ating ini-expect, we lose sight of what God can do more in our lives. Allow Him to surprise you. Lord, bahala ka na. Do whatever is right. This is a total trust in the grace of God. And this is giving God a chance and the opportunity to amaze and surprise you. You know, the nature of grace is really beyond fair. Because grace is equal to being generous. So our desire for fairness is misplaced when we operate in the context of the kingdom of God. Dahil sa loob ng kaharian ng Diyos, umaapaw po ang grasya and generosity of God. If you demand fairness, baka kung saan ka pupulutin. Baka nasa labas pa tayo ng kaharian ng Diyos. Dahil what we deserve is death. What we deserve is punishment because of our sin. If it was fairness that God is using, you would not be able to even enter His kingdom. Take for example, in the area of our salvation. It says in Ephesians 2, that for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. 
Definitely, our salvation is not a result of our good works. It is the work, it is the result of the good work of someone else. It is the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And our part is just to believe. Asan ang fairness doon? He was condemned so that we will be accepted by God. He died so that we will have eternal life. Fair ba yun? In fact, pamamangha ka sa nature ng grace because it is so dynamic that it compensates or it increases para lang mapunan ang ating pangangailangan. You know, in Romans 5.20, it says, The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Konti lang ba ang kasalanan mo o ito ang katapat na grasya dyan? Kung sobrang laki ang kasalanan mo, dagdagan ng grasya. Ayan. So, kung ano ang pangangailangan mo, isusupply sa inyo. Yan ang nature ng grace. Para sa dulo, magpangabot tayong lahat. Walang mas mataas, walang mas mababa. Kaya in the end, you cannot claim to be better than others. At sasabihin mo, eh dating murderer yan eh. Better pa ako dyan. Dating magnanakaw yan eh. Mas better ako dyan. In the end, nakatungtong tayo sa isang level ground na ating tinatawag ay grace. And this is where we get our worth. We are precious today in the sight of the Lord only by the grace of God. Whether we became Christian early or late in life, pare-pareho tayong ang tinutungtungan natin ay grasya lamang ng Diyos. Therefore, it is grace that defines our worth. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Wala dapat magmamayabang. Sa ating pag-serve sa Panginoon, wala dapat itong mga kaisipan na mas magaling pa ako dyan eh, mas kirapap dapat ako dyan eh, dapat mas malaki sweldo ko dahil ako ang nauna, or dapat ganito ako, dapat ganyan. You know, pasalamat na lang tayo, napabilang tayo sa kaharian at tinawag tayo. We were all worthless. We were waiting to be hired and no one called us. Our entitlement issue becomes irrelevant when we operate in the grace of God. And that should be replaced with a humble service without counting the cost. This is our new identity. Our worth is never in the things that we do. Instead, grace should fuel us to serve God without looking at our brothers or sisters dahil sila din, they are just responding only to how the grace of God is moving or inspiring them to do. And this should bring us to our promise today that each one will have a place in God's vineyard. In the kingdom of God, lahat ng niligtas ni Kristo ay may lugar sa kanyang kaharian. You know, the thief on the cross is a classic and literal example that the last will be first. Dahil mas nauna pa siyang nakapunta sa paraiso kaysa kina Peter, kaysa kina Paul. When Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. That man on the cross will enjoy the full blessings of heaven alongside those who have labored their whole lives for Christ. Ganon talaga. In fact, while the early church still had to go through difficult times of persecution and testing, itong magnanakaw nandun na sa paraiso, kasama ni Jesus. In the economy of God, the last can sometimes be first and the first will be last. And that's just how it is with God. Those who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. Such is the grace of God. Ganon talaga. Ibig sabihin, walang lamang sa mata ng Diyos. And no one can question that wisdom, for He is sovereign. He can do whatever He wants. Because in the end, everything that He does is right and pleasing in His own sight. Although, may not be pleasing to us or to some people. But I believe that in the heart of that man hanging on the cross with Jesus, is a very deep longing to serve His Savior in the kingdom. When he heard Jesus' assurance of salvation, I'm sure in his heart, Lord, sana may time pa ako upang maserve kita, maserve man lang kita, mapaglingkuran man lang kita, pero wala na eh. Ito ako, I'm hanging here on this cross, waiting for my death. In that very short moment, his heart is bursting with mixed emotions, fear 
there is pain, and at the same time, there is joy dahil kasama pala siya sa paraiso kahit 11th hour na siyang dumating. He is a last minute saved Christian. Kaya marinig mo sa kanyang sinabi doon sa si isang mm. kawatan na katabi din, who insulted Jesus by saying, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. At ito ang kanyang sabi doon, don't you fear God? Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man, or Jesus, has done nothing wrong. In this way man lang, he can defend Jesus. Not that Jesus needed his defense, but isn't it a show of longing to serve and to show gratitude? When one receives grace, it looks for ways to express it in whatever way. Whether in action, whether in words, whether in care, grace is a powerful force. It equips you to serve your master. It fuels your will to please your master even beyond what is norm. Grace is never bound by anything. That is why gratitude and service, they always go together in the kingdom community. Gratitude should be our motivation for service. So that this grace puts us all on equal ground, on the privilege of serving God in whatever way that we can. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I give you. Because of grace, we all have our places in His vineyard. Whether late kamer ka, hindi pa huli ang lahat dahil hindi po nauubusan ng trabaho sa kanyang ubasan. That man on the cross was able to serve Jesus in the ministry of rebuking. Are you in the field of business? You can serve your master there by being an influencer. Are you in the marketplace? Serve him with honesty, with integrity. Are you a full-time mother? You are serving him by molding the godly characters of your children. No one is deprived of work in the kingdom of God. When you do it in response to the grace of God, hindi po tayo nauubusan na mga gagawin. For our practical application in response to how the grace of God moves us today, there are two things that I'd like to share. Number one, list down what your special skills may be and pray to offer them to the Lord in the kingdom of God. What are my skills or my abilities? Is it administration? Is it technical work? Or is it in the area of the Word of God? Or is it encouraging? Is it giving? Is it teaching? Bawat isa sa atin, meron tayong pwedeng magawa in response to the grace of God. Pray to God for an opportunity to be used through, the, through those skills. Number two, lift up others in prayer. It is easier to look at others as co-workers rather than as comp competitors in the kingdom of God. So instead of being jealous about them, lift them up in prayer and bless them. Thank the Lord that He has blessed others so they too can contribute in the great work of the Lord. Nakatulad mo rin ay tinawag lang din naman upang magsilbi sa Kanya. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen and Amen.